I hear a lot of people talking about how Nintendo is saving their big games for 2019 and the Nintendo Switch's 2018 will just be filled with ports. That statement has some merit to it, although I do believe that 2018 will still be a big year for the Nintendo Switch. What's going on, it's Cyroth here, bringing you a new Nintendo video, and for more content like this, remember to subscribe and tick the bell icon so that you don't miss anything. The recent Nintendo Direct Mini left many people with some concerns. With the only brand new first party reveal being Mario Tennis Aces, it left some people feeling that, oh my goodness, there's not going to be many new games revealed for 2018, and this year's going to suck. While I personally love Mario spin-off games, and I'm looking forward to Mario Tennis Aces a lot, I know there's plenty of people who are not. They might not even be looking forward to any of the games already confirmed for 2018 which I'm going to talk about and with the reveal of Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition and Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze with a new funky mode being on the Nintendo Switch 2 Wii U ports it makes those people feel that this entire year is just going to be filled with ports and games that I don't care about. Now listen there's several reasons that I'm going to be talking about within this video that will probably lead you to believe that 2018 will still be big for the Nintendo Switch and I want to talk about the existing games that we know about first. I'll start with the two ports. To a certain degree, I would like ports to be put on the Nintendo Switch, but I also do not want them. I recently made a video with Smashcast and Switch Stop talking about 5 Wii U games that we want on the Nintendo Switch. You would probably think that I'm very in favor of Wii U games being ported to the Nintendo Switch after making a video like that, and I am, however, I do not want them taking the spot of a brand new Nintendo Switch game. What I mean here is that in 2017, Nintendo tried to put out one new game per month on the Nintendo Switch. Nintendo Switch. Now, a couple of those months were filled with Wii U ports like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe in April, for example. However, it was relatively consistent, and I do give Nintendo some credit for trying their best on the first year because it's very difficult. You don't have everybody adopting to the new system just yet. I'll excuse the first year, although the second year should be much better than the first. This is because you have more development teams familiar with the hardware and more games can be produced for the Nintendo Switch. They're used to programming for this console. And if there's several months within 2018 that are exclusively taken up by one game that is a Wii U port, I'm going to be very disappointed. If there's no other Nintendo game in May and Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, the exact same game, just with a new character included is supposed to rake in the dough in that month that is crazy okay i love donkey kong country tropical freeze wii u ports on the switch are good for people that never owned a wii u and there's got to be some because the nintendo switch is on track to outsell the wii u really quickly they're good for those people but for the people who already bought those games on the wii u they're left wanting more all right what about the main first party games that were previously confirmed to be coming to the nintendo switch kirby star allies is going to be the march game and i'm perfectly fine with that i'm excited for kirby star allies the graphics look nice and the gameplay style looks really cool. I like the story concept too. Yoshi for the Nintendo Switch doesn't have a release date yet and in my 2018 games predictions video which is kind of disproven now I actually put Yoshi at a February release date although I definitely think that's going to be pushed back now because we never got any information about that very recently. I'd say maybe around June we get that game although if it is released in May that'll make up for Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze being the only known game at this point being released in that time period. I don't know about you, but I'm really excited for the Square Enix title Project Octopath Traveler. I really enjoyed the demo for this game. It was a ton of fun. The art style is brilliant, and the stories that we just got to experience the very beginning of them left me hooked, and I want to find out what happens next. And those are only two of the stories, and the first chapter of those stories, it seems like this game is going to have a ton of content included within it. Bayonetta 1 and 2 are the next first party Nintendo Switch games to release. They're releasing in February. This is again a port from the Wii U. I understand them putting these games on the Nintendo Switch because of the confirmed Bayonetta 3 that probably won't be releasing in 2018. I predict 2019 for that, and then that also supports the argument of Nintendo saving some of their big games for 2019. 19 although I don't believe that Bayonetta 3 moving to 2019 is just gonna end Nintendo's 2018. We didn't know before the Game Awards that a third Bayonetta was even in existence and was being developed for the Nintendo Switch. Nobody was necessarily begging for a Bayonetta 3 at that point. So I don't think that Bayonetta 3 being in 2019 
hurts the Switch in 2018. Although it does look like Bayonetta 2 and Bayonetta 1 being in the same package together is going to be the only mainline Nintendo game in February. The Switch has been out for almost a year now. You should have one first party game per month. A new first party game. And then there's Fire Emblem, which was confirmed all the way back in last January at the Nintendo Switch event to be coming in 2018, and we still haven't heard anything about it. It's at this point that I'd like to address the rumors of a second Nintendo Direct happening in January. Because the lack of information for the titles that I've been talking about could just be resolved, and we could find more information about the Nintendo Switch games coming out in 2018 with a second January Direct. I don't like the entitlement of some of the Nintendo fans saying that we deserve another Nintendo Direct. Reveal all of your information right now, because that's how it was last year. No, the reason that almost all of 2017 Nintendo Switch games were revealed in January is because Nintendo wanted to get the sales up. They wanted people to be excited for the Nintendo Switch, and what a better way to do that than to show some of the content that they could be expecting for the years ahead. At this point, with the Nintendo Switch success, they don't really have to do that. They can wait. Wait for a more mainstream time to reveal their games, like E3. They normally have a Direct around April, so they could wait till that time as well. Yes, I know after every mini Direct, within 20 days, there's been a mainline Direct, although I think Nintendo could ignore that pattern in this instance. If Nintendo just doesn't have any plans for Q1 2018, then it doesn't make any sense for them to reveal what's going to be coming out later on in this year. Why don't you wait till it's closer to the release? I think that's exactly what they're doing. Now, I'm going to defend them for waiting to reveal and not giving in to the pressure of the fan base if that's the case but I'm also not going to defend the fact that the Q1 for this year is absolutely lackluster. Kirby is the only original first party game that we know of coming in Q1 2018. We could get more information about Fire Emblem in a second direct, but if Nintendo is going to wait, I think they'll do the full reveal of Fire Emblem in April and disclose even more information about that at E3. But those are the first party games that are explicitly confirmed to be coming out this year. What about the two major games that were announced back at E3 last year, but we don't necessarily know a release date for yet? Yes, I'm talking about Pokemon and Metroid Prime 4. I've made an entire video talking about why Pokemon on the Nintendo Switch will release this year, and I still believe that to be true. Nintendo has set a 20 million sales goal for the Nintendo Switch, and it's going to be very difficult to reach that because in 2017, they relied on The Legend of Zelda, which is their third biggest franchise, and Mario, which is their biggest franchise. What are you going to use to get you to 20 million except for your second biggest franchise, Pokemon? I've talked about this in previous videos to a long extent, so I'll spare you of the significant details here. Although the Pokemon fanbase is going to have to migrate from the Nintendo 3DS to the Switch, and I believe that an Nintendo Switch Pokemon game that is good enough will attract them to purchase the console. Metroid, on the other hand, I don't really see releasing around that same time. Yes, I know in my 2018 Games Predictions video, I predicted Metroid Prime 4 to come out around the end of 2018, although I do not believe that to be the case anymore. When thinking about it further, Nintendo doesn't really need to release Metroid this year. Why rush it out? Like Miyamoto said about The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, a rushed game is forever bad, but a delayed game is eventually good, and this principle could definitely be applied to Metroid Prime 4. Metroid historically has not been known as a system seller game. The sales do decently, but they're nowhere near the sales of any of Nintendo's major IPs. And if Nintendo doesn't have to rely on Metroid Prime 4 to sell Nintendo Switches in 2018 like they have to for Pokemon, then there's no pressure and no real reason to release it this year. They could wait till 2019, flesh out the game even more, and have an even more stellar lineup of games for 2019. So by taking Taking Metroid out of the equation for 2018, it sort of supports the contrary point that I'm trying to make, that Nintendo is saving their big games for 2019. They're saving some of the games, although the games that we already know of are going to be really good. Kirby, Yoshi, Octopath, a new Fire Emblem, and a new Pokemon, even though we haven't seen any gameplay of the latter two, I still have faith in those franchises to deliver quality experiences on the Switch. Both Fire Emblem and Pokemon are desperately trying trying to get the immense fan base that they have on the Nintendo 3DS to convert over to the Switch, and they're going to try to pour their heart and soul into the Switch game to ensure that that happens. Both of those
those games are very likely to release this year and around the holiday season. This will be an incredible back half of the year for 2018, and if Octopath Traveler ends up around there, it's going to be really good for RPGs. And if what I mentioned before about the Nintendo Directs holds true, that Nintendo is waiting till later Directs to announce other games because they don't really have to reveal them this early, then we could be getting even more first party games than that. Yes, I am very disappointed about the Wii U ports possibly taking over the months in 2018, and if that happens, I'm going to completely change my opinion on this topic. However, for now, I have faith that Nintendo still has a bunch of announcements in the bank that they're waiting to talk about just so that they could have four directs and have a sufficient amount of content within each of them. Compared to previous mini Nintendo directs, this one had a lot of content within it, and I don't really think that a major direct could follow this up because the major direct would have just revealed a bunch of the announcements that were in this mini one. If there was really a major direct plans, I think the Wii U ports and Mario Tennis Aces as well as The World Ends With You and Dark Souls would all be saved for the major direct and then the mini direct would just be left to the DLC updates that we got announcements for. Nintendo seems to be adding a lot of downloadable content to their games which is going to flesh out those games and make them last longer into 2018, which I guess is their philosophy to getting through Q1 of this year, then having a strong three other quarters of the year year so that they could just use DLC for existing games that are already on the Switch as a means of new content to provide to consumers. The original stuff is going to be left for later. There are many possibilities for game announcements that could happen in April and just release a couple of months later. I talked more about this in my Games Predictions video where I mentioned that Mario Party games generally have a close reveal to release period. And if Mario Party for the Nintendo Switch gets revealed and goes back to the original formula, no cars, no action based Mario Party none of that and it is just the original board formula then I think that would just be released a couple of months after its reveal and it would be greatly received and the Nintendo Switch fan base would be really happy because Mario Party games have been on a steady decline I talked about this in my problems with Mario Party and how to fix them video games like that could be revealed in an April direct and released a couple of months later and then E3 could still have many of the third party announcements because even though Nintendo announced most of the things in January for 2017 they left a lot of the third party announcements to E3 that still came out in 2017. So we can see ports of many third party games still come into the Switch this year and we don't even have to know about them this early. Another big factor in the Nintendo's success for this year is the newly revealed Nintendo Labo. Regardless of your opinion on this thing, I definitely think it's gonna sell well and I personally like the idea. It gets people to be creative and has some mini games that are included within it. While I don't think it's gonna take over any of Nintendo's main IPs, it is interesting to see that Project Giant Robot was moved to the Nintendo Labo. I definitely believe that this is going to take off, and it's going to be a great assistance to the 20 million sales goal for the Nintendo Switch. That and Pokemon, I think, are going to be two of the main driving sources for sales this year. But with all that being said, I really hope that 2018 is great for the Nintendo Switch, and I believe that it is going to be. The last thing that I want is a bad year of games for the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, 2019 will be even better if everything's pushed back, but who really wants to wait for 2019 to play all of their great games. If Nintendo balances it out accordingly, all I'm asking for is one main first party game per month, that's all we really need, then I think that 2018 could be really good for the Nintendo Switch. As I said at the top of the video, remember to subscribe and tick the bell icon so that you do not miss the latest Nintendo videos like this one. If you enjoyed this one, remember to share it with your friends and give it a like. Check out some of the previous videos that I have on screen for you, and I'll see you next time.